Okay, so we are looking at diagonalization, chapter on diagonalization, in particular, we're still looking at inner products, norms, and orthogonality, and I think we just finished with norms, and now we're going to look at orthogonality. Okay. Okay, here we go. So two vectors are orthogonal if and only if their inner product is zero. I hmm, should say U V inner product of U and V equals zero. We'll put that way around actually. Inner product of U V equals zero if and only if U is orthogonal to V. Okay. So the implication goes both ways. Okay, here you can say two vectors are orthogonal exactly when their inner product is zero. So, for example, uh, is uh, x and y orthogonal, where x is i, 2 minus i, minus 7, and y is 1, 3 minus i, 1. Okay. So, of course, you can't use a dot product on these because they are complex vectors. Okay. So, the inner product is going to be i times the conjugate of 1, which is just 1, so i times 1, 2 minus i times 3 plus i, minus 7 times 1, okay? So then if you simplify it, what do you get? i plus 6 minus i times i is minus i squared, which is 1, which is minus minus 1, which is 1, minus 3i, and then we have, uh, oh, minus 3i, and then we have 2 times i, yeah, okay, and then minus 7. Uh, so you get 6 plus 1 minus 7 is 0, i minus 3 plus 2i is 0, yes. So the vectors are orthogonal. Okay. A uh, set of vectors is orthonormal if every vector in the set has a norm of 1, and the, vector, the vectors are mutually orthogonal, i.e. every pair of vectors in the set is orthogonal. Okay, so there's this orthogonal and there's, there's this orthonormal. So it just means orthogonal and normal. So normal is the having a norm of 1, corresponding normal if it has a norm of 1, and mutually orthogonal, i.e. every pair of vectors in the set is orthogonal to each other. Okay, so this set, 1, 0, 0, 1, the standard basis, is orthonormal, right? Of course, you take the inner product of this with this, the same as the dot product, because these are both real vectors, and you'll get, of course, you'll get 0, and then clearly the length of this vector is 1, the norm of this vector is 1. Remember, the norm is... Inner product of the vector, inner product of the vector itself, right? And the, this thing clearly goes for any canonical basis, right? Um, the canonical basis is like, you know, e1, e2, R, for Rn, it's e1 to en, where, you know, ei is a vector with n vector with one in the ith row and zeros elsewhere, okay? Here's another set, here's another set though. Is this one also normal? Okay, well, you work out their norms, so inner product of this with itself. Is going to be 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2. So that's a half plus half, which is 1 square root it. Okay? And then do the same thing for the other set, the other vector. Raise on the calculation, you get 1. So they are both normal vectors. Then you take the inner product of them with, them set with each other. You get 1 over. So we also want to, we want to check the inner product of 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2, with 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2. Okay, it's going to be the same as dot product because these are both real vectors. You get a half minus a half, which is 0. Yes, yeah, so the vectors are orthogonal. So this is an orthonormal set. It's, ortho it's an orthonormal set. The vectors are orthogonal to each other. Each vector is normal. Okay, now we have an example with in R3. Is this set 1, 0, 1, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, minus 1? Is it orthonormal? Okay, so first of all, yes, each pair of vectors is orthogonal. So, for, for example, they do x, in a product of x and y, you get minus 1 plus 0 plus 1, which is 0, 
uh, if you do, and you also need to do x and z, right? So you do 1, you get 1, plus 0, minus 1, okay, that's 0. And we also need to do uh, y and z, so you get minus 1, plus 2, minus 1, that's 0. Now, you, of course, you don't need to do, uh, like, y, x, and, the, you know, the backwards things. You don't need to do z, x, and uh, z, x, and z, y, because you know that... Wait, hold on a second. Because you know that that x y is equal to well in general the conjugate of y x, right? So if x y equals zero, then y x equals zero, and indeed also if yeah okay if x y equals zero, then y x equals zero, okay. However, the vectors do not, uh, do not all have a norm of 1, okay? So the norm of this first vector, and the product of it with itself, is going to be 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1, so 2, and then square rooted. Square root of 2, that's not 1. This, so, we can, so definitely, this, we can only tell this set is not orthonormal, but let's just check what the... Because it's got this one, this x has got a uh, norm of 2, but let's just look out, work out the norms of the other ones, for just sake. So you have... 1 square root of 3, right? 1 plus 1, 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square square rooted. And then norm of z is uh, 1 plus 2 squared plus minus 1 squared, so that's 6, and then square rooted, square root of 6. Okay, but you can make this set orthonormal, right? Because all the vectors are already not already orthogonal to each other, so you can scale each vector by the reciprocal, by 1 over its norm, to get an orthonormal set. So the norms were root 2, root 3, and 6, and root 6. So if you div divide each vector by its norm, so to speak, or multiply each vector by 1 over its norm, you get 1 over root 2, 0, 1 over root 2, minus 1, root 2. Ah. That should not be root 2 there. That should be a root 3 there. 1 over, minus 1 over root 3. 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3, and then... This should not be a 2 there, that should be it's 1 over root 6. 2 over root 6 minus 1 over root 6. Okay. Okay, now, every set of mutually orthogonal vectors is also linearly independent. Okay, so if vectors are mutually orthogonal, then they're linearly independent. Now that's easy to sort of justify rough uh, heuristically, given what we've said about what orthogonal means. Orthogonal is kind of like the generalization of being at 90 degrees. So of course, if vectors are at 90 degrees, they're orthogonal to each other, they're not multiples to each other. So if you have a bunch of vectors that are all at 90 degrees to each other, they're all linearly independent. But of course, orthogonal is a, is, um, a generalization of perpendicular, of 90 degrees. So a proof, you really need a proof, an algebraic proof which you are going to do in the tutorial problem, so I will leave that out. And now we have another part of this theorem. Not all linearly independent, not all linearly independent sets are mutually orthogonal, but they can be made orthogonal using the Gram-Schmidt procedure. So this is a bit of a vague statement at the moment, so, and we're only going to discuss it more later on. So I will leave it there. But roughly, but what they mean by made orthogonal is they mean you can take a, if you have a linearly independent set, S, okay, right? Then you consider what the span of S is. Maybe it's the subspace V, okay? You can replace S with a set T, okay, where everything in T is orthogonal, where T is an orthonormal set, or sorry, T is a set of orthonormal, or vectors are all orthogonal to each other. But the span of t is still the same as the span of, z, the span of s. Okay, so we saw that you have if you have this set which is ortho, which is mutually where the vectors are mutually orthogonal, you can make them all you can make it orthonormal by scaling the vectors. But we also have this thing which says that if you have just a set that's just a linearly, linearly independent of vectors, you can modify it in some way so that with, without changing the span, so that you can now have a set of orthogonal vectors. But we're going to go into that later by actually doing some, doing this Gramsci procedure, doing this orthogonal, orthogonalization. Okay, I'm going to leave it there for now.